Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back to lectures on advanced calculus for engineers and today in this week we will move to multivariable calculus and this is the first lecture uh, of multivariable calculus and today uh, I will introduce you to the concept of the limit and some introduction to the functions of uh, more than one variables. Okay, so this is the content we will be going through in this lecture. So First, I will introduce a function of two variables or in general if we have more than a one variable. So, it can be three or four variables and then the introduction to uh, the limit of the functions. Well, so coming to the functions of two variables, we have already uh, idea of function of one variable. So, what is the difference and how the functions of two variables will be defined? So, a function z is equal to f x y. So, now for uh, so far we used to take like y is equal to f x. So, the y was a function of one variable x. Now, we have two variables two independent variables x and y and we will be denoting that function as z is equal to f x y. So, this is a real valued function. So, we will be talking about a real valued functions only not the complex valued functions the real valued function of two variables x and y if to each point x y of a certain part of x y plane corresponds to a real value z according to some given rule. So, earlier it was like y is equal to f x. So, there was a range or interval for x and for each x y was defined according to that rule f x, but now we have two variables x and y. So, we will have some uh, domain in the x y plane. So, where the function will pick the, the points and then corresponding to each point in this x y plane we will have a real value which we are denoting by z there. So, there will be a z axis and this value will be uh, considered over the z value given x y according to this rule f x uh, y we will get the value z. So, the domain exactly this set of points a uh, set of points is x y in the x y plane for which f x y is defined because f x y must be defined. So, there might be some point in the x y plane where f x y is not defined and that will not be the domain those points will not be in the domain. So, all the points in the domain the function uh, must be uh, defined. The range will be uh, as usual the definition. So, the collection of all possible values of z corresponding to uh, the point of this x y. Well, so here this x y are called independent variables and z is called dependent variable. So, this is uh, how we visualize uh, functions of two variable. So, here we have x axis, y axis and z axis we have picked some domain here in the uh, x y plane which is actually the domain and corresponding to each point here. So, suppose we have taken this x y point in this x y plane or in the domain of this function and then there will be a point z. So, for each value of x y there will be a point z which will be uh, computed uh, by this rule f x y and if we trace all these points there z then what we will get basically we will get a surface. So, in this case when we are talking about the function of two variables we will uh, it will denote actually a surface in this three dimensional plane 
Whereas, if you remember y is equal to f x when we had uh, the function of one variable, it used to be a curve there in the x y plane. But now, for each x y, there will be a corresponding z, and if we trace all these uh, z there, then uh, we will get a surface z is equal to f x y. So, here we need uh, some preparation for the uh, de for defining the limits of this of such functions of two variable. So, for that the uh, we will be introducing a few uh, concepts uh, in the next slide, but now here just an example uh, for the function of two variables. So, for instance if we take z is equal to square root 1 minus x square minus y square. So, in that case since we know that z is a real we are talking about real valued functions only. So, we must have this 1 minus x square minus y square positive. So, here we are looking for all possible values of x and y for which this function can be defined. So, here this 1 minus x square minus y square must be greater than equal to 0 otherwise this function will not be defined. So, out of this inequality 1 minus x square minus y square greater than 0 we got x square plus y square less than or equal to 1. Therefore, the domain of this uh, function will be x y all points in this r square and where this x square plus y square is less than equal to 1. And the range for uh, this function will be defined. Uh, so, all values of z for these x and y or the x y will be from the domain and the set of all values of z will define the range. So, for the range z uh, a real number and z will be between 0 and 1, because here this is square root is defined only for positive values and we have this restriction that x square plus y square must be less than equal to 1. So, this value under the root will be between 0 and 1 and as a result this z will be also between 0 and 1. So, this is the representation in the two dimensional plane. So, this is this denotes just the half is sphere, because we have taken only z is equal to the plus part plus 1 minus. So, here the plus only has been considered if you take the negative part also then it will form a complete sphere. So, if you add here z is equal to minus part as well then that will be the lower portion of this sphere. So, here we have taken z is equal to plus sign. So, this is the upper half. So, this is a semi uh, sphere there. So, this is x axis here we have the y axis and corresponding to each point in this domain x square plus y square minus 1 we will get a point in this the z axis and the if we trace all those then that will form a surface which is a semi sphere in this particular case. So, now we define few uh, terminologies which will be used uh, in further discussion of functions of two variables. The one is we need and we are familiar with that the functions. Uh, so, the distance between the two points in the x y plane. So, suppose we have a point here x naught y naught we have another point x 1 y 1 in the x y plane and the distance between the two points. So, the distance this p q will be the square root x 1 minus x naught whole square plus y 1 minus y naught whole square and this one uh, will be used to get the, the distance between the, the two points in general, but the concept which we want to uh, discuss here that is the neighborhood of a point. So, suppose there is a point x naught y naught and we want to define its neighborhood. So, uh, that uh, or uh, to be precise we call it as like delta neighborhood of uh, this point p and we usually denote by n delta p or n p delta. So, that is the p uh, the delta neighborhood of the point p why this delta and, and how this is related to the neighborhood we will see in a minute. So, this delta neighborhood of uh, the point p is defined as all the points x y in this uh, x y plane and what is the condition that the distance from x naught y naught point, because we are talking about this p point whose coordinates are x naught y naught. So, we are considering now in the neighborhood all those points 
whose distance from that point p x naught y naught is less than this delta. So, how this delta is is coming into the picture. So, this is called delta neighborhood. So, if you have a large delta of course, uh, a larger portion of this x y plane will form this neighborhood, but if delta is very small then the points in the very close vicinity of this x naught y naught will define this neighborhood. So, suppose this is the point p and we have this uh, delta then this disk here. So, all points in this in this open disk. So, the boundary is not included because we have not written here less than or equal to delta. So, the boundary is not included. So, that circle uh, of radius delta is not included in the neighborhood only. So, except that circle part the boundary part all other points are included. So, this is the neighborhood and here you can realize this that all these point whose distance from p is less than delta form uh, this neighborhood or they are part of this neighborhood. So, not necessarily that we have always this uh, circular neighborhood, but we can also define like here we have defined this, uh, this, this cubic. Uh, so, the square. So, the square region around this uh, x naught y naught as the neighborhood. So, we will take all points x and y who belongs to this square neighborhood of this, this point. So, in that case this is basically the neighborhood, but most frequently we use uh, uh, this definition of the neighborhood circular neighborhood which makes more sense because now all the points here are at equal distance from the p, but in this neighborhood for instance this point. So, only there are few points here which are uh, far uh, from uh, the other point. So, the circular neighborhood uh, makes more sense and we usually use the concept of circular neighborhood. However, this is not restricted this is also a neighborhood or we can have a rectangular neighborhood. So, all these are uh, the definition of the neighborhood we consider. Coming to the limit of a function of one variable just to recall because this concept will be extended for functions of two variables. So, there we say that uh, the function f x as x approaches to x naught the limit is L if for every epsilon if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta positive such that for all x which belongs to this uh, <coughs> neighborhood. So, this is in, in one dimensional uh, case this will be the, the, the neighborhood because all these points which, which are just delta far from this x naught point. So, if this is the point x naught then up to here. So, if this is delta here. So, all these point in this uh, neighborhood the delta neighborhood uh, we can pick from here and then the difference between f x and minus l. So, L was the was the limit. So, f x minus L will be less than epsilon. So, what do we mean by this? So, this definition says that for every epsilon yeah that is important that for every epsilon if we can find a delta if for every epsilon epsilon we can choose however small. So, if for every small not for some particular epsilon, but for every epsilon if we can find a delta or if there exists a delta such that any point from this delta neighborhood if we take the delta neighborhood of this x naught if we take then the difference between the function value and the L can be a set to less than epsilon. Well, so suppose we have here uh, the x naught and we are talking about this limit L there. <coughs> Note that the function may not be defined at this x naught point because here in the definition also that x naught point is excluded. So, we are talking here all the points uh, other than x naught if this f x minus l is less than epsilon uh, the, 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 the definition satisfies for the limit. So, here the function may not be defined at that point x naught is still we can talk about the limit. So, here this x naught l and uh, suppose we take this epsilon here. So, epsilon as I said can be anything and it should happen for all epsilon basically. So, we have taken this epsilon uh, positive. So, in the uh, in, in the in the very uh, close vicinity of this L point. So, this was 
this was the L and around this L we have chosen this epsilon and now corresponding to the epsilon if we can find out the delta. So, in this case when we see that this function uh, is exactly meeting to this point here from this side and from this side. So, the limit uh, seems to be L here and uh, by this definition meaning is that we draw this line and see this is uh, it is meeting that function there and also with plus epsilon this is meeting here and then correspondingly you have the points on on x uh, axis and then the smaller this distance around this x naught point we take this delta. So, meaning is that any point now in this delta neighborhood. So, from here to this here we pick any point here suppose we have taken this point then the corresponding value is this and the difference between f x and, and this l is again below this epsilon. So, bounded by this epsilon or less than this epsilon. So, any point we can pick in this uh, in this neighborhood now and we will have this f x minus l less than epsilon that is the limit of the limit. This is, this is the definition of the limit. If we are not having such a possibility that for some epsilon uh, we, we are not able to find delta in that case uh, we will say that limit does not exist. This definition is very much used uh, in the analysis it is uh, very important for the analysis part though when we talk about about the theoretical uh, so about the practical so finding the limits this is not very useful as we will observe in, in few examples later. So, in other words what we say that if we uh, can make the difference this f x minus l saying this that for every epsilon uh, greater than positive we uh, get a neighborhood where uh, the difference between f x and minus l uh, is less than epsilon. So, in other words we say that we can make this difference f x minus l because we are talking about the limit of f x as x goes to x naught to l. So, basically the difference between this f x and, and l if we can make as small as we like by considering a small enough neighborhood around this x naught. Then we say that the limit x goes to x naught f x is equal to L. So, naturally our, our, our interest for this uh, limit is when the epsilon is, is very very uh, small. So, whether for a very small or however small uh, epsilon can we find this delta neighborhood. So, that uh, so, that this f x minus l is less than epsilon for any point we pick in the delta neighborhood. Well, as an example or how to apply this definition we will go through because that will be very useful for other two dimensional case as well. So, suppose here we know that already that limit x goes to 1 3 x plus 1 is equal to 4. So, x x goes to 1 this is 3 and plus 1 4. So, this is trivial to compute, but now we will see that how uh, it is fitting to the uh, definition we have just given this epsilon delta definition of the limit. So, uh, we will show that for a given epsilon or for any epsilon there exists a delta. So, that this difference a 3 x plus 4 and the limit this 4 can be set less than epsilon. So, this epsilon we will choose. So, whether for any epsilon can we get such a delta. So, that the this is the neighborhood of, of 1. So, if we uh, can we prove this that for any point in the neighborhood of this one in the delta neighborhood of this one this difference is less than epsilon and this should hold for for any epsilon we should be able to find such a delta neighborhood. So, let us see how to perform this and the similar steps will be done for the two dimensional case. So, we always start with this difference because this is what we want to set to less than epsilon and we want to see that what is the relation how to find this delta because delta is very much related to the epsilon. If you have a large epsilon possibly the delta neighborhood will be also large, but if you have very very small epsilon then accordingly the delta will be also small. So, we are trying to find that for a given epsilon how to find this delta so that uh, this difference becomes less than epsilon for all those x in this delta neighborhood of 1. 
Well, so we always uh, you know start with this uh, difference and then try to tr out of this difference we try to relate to the delta and then to the epsilon uh, as a relation between the two. So, that this is, is less than epsilon. Well, so this is nothing but 3 uh, x minus uh, 3 and then again 3 if we take common it is like x minus 1. So, here itself we have this uh, we have rewritten this difference in terms of delta that is the first step. So, in the first step this is the first step we will be writing this difference in terms of delta. So, here this is like th uh, less than 3 delta because x minus 1 uh, is the neighborhood of this one which is less than delta. So, here we have this 3 delta and what was our, our aim what was our goal that whether this difference can be set to less than epsilon. So, now if we set this 3 delta less than epsilon if we set this 3 delta less than epsilon then we are basically done we got our delta also from delta here less than epsilon by 3. So, if we choose delta less than epsilon uh, by 3 in that case this difference is coming less than epsilon this is what we want to, to show. So, by setting this everything to less than epsilon and from here we will relate delta and epsilon that means, we got the delta any delta you pick less than equal to 3 by uh, epsilon by 3 and then our job is done that any point in this delta neighborhood this difference will be less than epsilon and here we have flexibility of choosing any epsilon now, uh, but it should be a positive of course, as per the definition. So, then for any epsilon any given epsilon we have this difference less than epsilon whenever uh, this x is picked from this one, uh, delta neighborhood of this one. So, this is these are the steps where we can show that uh, 4 is the limit for this function similar steps will be used for two dimensional cases. So, again we will start from the difference we will try to relate to the delta and once we have delta we will set everything less than epsilon from this relation from the last this relation of delta and epsilon we will give that delta should be less than from this epsilon and then we uh, uh, all the steps are done which shows that this difference can be made arbitrarily small basically. So, suppose here uh, I mean this is clear that if you, we choose for example, this epsilon in this case this is a linear function then the corresponding de delta neighborhood is clear from here. So, any point you take here in this neighborhood and then that will uh, give you this f x minus l less than epsilon, but if for example, your epsilon is bigger you are getting also the delta bigger. So, now any point here in this delta if you pick then again the difference between this f x and this minus l is uh, less than epsilon. So, this delta of course, depends on epsilon just an example because uh, here the situation will be more clear that what will happen if uh, that l is not the limit. So, uh, how this uh, de epsilon delta approach will react to uh, the case of non existence of limit for instance. So, suppose I have picked here a number l. So, and the function in this side starts from here other side starts from here. So, there is a uh, breakdown in the in the function and therefore, the limit is not basically L because if you are approaching from this side you, you will let up here and if you approach from th that side we will get this value. So, this is not the limit. So, how this delta epsilon uh, approach will, will tell us that yes here in this situation we cannot find delta for any given value of, of epsilon. So, for instance if, if I take this epsilon here if I take this epsilon here then what will happen. So, for this epsilon however, small delta we pick we can we can choose delta even smaller than this one what we have taken at this moment, but then uh, if you pick a point there the function value is here because there is a there be breakdown in the function the function value is there and L is here. So, it is bigger than epsilon. So, if I take this epsilon for instance I am not able to find the delta for which this f x minus l is less than epsilon for 
any val uh, for all these values of x from this neighborhood. So, this is not possible in this case. So, for a given epsilon uh, there does not exist any delta such that this f x minus l is less than epsilon whenever we have x from this delta neighborhood. So, for the existence of this limit means then every neighborhood n epsilon l. So, in other words because we are moving towards the more general version of it. So, here we say that this limit means that every neighborhood n epsilon l. So, the neighborhood of l. So, this is every neighborhood of l there exist a neighborhood of x naught. So, the n delta x naught such that f x belongs to this l neighborhood whenever x is from the delta neighborhood that is what uh, the, the general meaning of this and x is not equal to x naught because function may not be defined at that point. So, we are not worried about x is equal to x naught. So, except that point any point you pick then uh, this f x corresponding f x should be uh, should belongs to that l neighborhood the, the epsilon neighborhood of this l. So, this is the meaning of uh, the epsilon delta approach which we have uh, just gone through for single variable case, but now for the limit of the functions of two variables we will move and this is a direct extension. So, here z is equal to f x y be a function of two variables. So, we are restricting to two variable case, but of course, this idea uh, can be uh, you know generalized for 3 d or 4 d cases. So, two variables and define in a domain d and suppose this x naught y naught be a point in d. Now, for a given epsilon. So, again the same definition. So, for given epsilon if we can find a real number delta positive such that for all for every point x y in the delta neighborhood of this satisfies this f x y minus l uh, less than epsilon. So, basically this is the uh, epsilon neighborhood of l that f x y should belongs to epsilon neighborhood of l. So, f x y minus uh, this l is less than epsilon whenever this x y is from that delta neighborhood. This is uh, the meaning of the delta neighborhood of x naught y naught point in the two dimensional case because here this is the distance from uh, the x naught y naught point. So, this is the uh, actually the same definition now uh, which we have studied for the one variable case here also for a given epsilon if we can find a delta such that this difference f x minus l is less than uh, epsilon uh, whenever this x y is from this uh, delta neighborhood of x naught y naught. Well, so the function may not be defined at x naught y naught again which uh, is excluded here. So, we are taking strictly positive. So, then the real number l is called the limit of the function f x y as uh, this x naught uh, x y goes to x naught y naught that is the meaning of this epsilon delta approach and symbolically we say that the limit x y goes to x naught y naught f x y is equal to L. Fine, so we will uh, go through some uh, problems some worked out problems where we will apply this epsilon delta approach to prove that yes uh, that given limit is indeed the limit of the function. So, here we will prove that the limit of this function is 0. The problem in this approach is that we have to uh, we should know a prior that this is the limit then you prove that this is the limit, but finding that limit how to find this limit this uh, approach is not very helpful. So, here we will prove that the limit of this x square plus y square into sin 1 over x square plus y square is 0 and using this epsilon delta approach. So, we take a point x y not equal to uh, this 0 comma 0 and consider this difference as uh, I said before that we will go with the difference of this function value and the limit. So, we have x square plus y square and this is sin 1 over x square plus y square and minus uh, 0. So, here uh, with this absolute value x square plus y square is anyway positive and then the absolute value of sin 1 over x square plus y square. And we know whatever is the argument for sin the absolute value of sin is bounded by 1. 
So, basically this quantity here we can set less than equal to 1 in that case we arrived that this difference is less than equal to x square plus y square and, and remember that we have to now relate to the neighborhood and then set everything to epsilon to get the relation between delta and epsilon because we want to uh, you know uh, set this difference to less than epsilon and then corresponding to that epsilon we want to find the delta neighborhood of uh, this 0 comma 0 point. So, remember now here the, the delta neighborhood of this 0 0 is basically given by all these points here which satisfy the in this inequality. So, square root x square plus y square less than delta and this is again here we have x square plus y square already. So, this is less than delta square. So, out of this relation here we can set here that x square plus y square less than delta square and now we arrive to a situation when this difference is written in terms of this uh, delta square. So, now we can set everything less than epsilon and then get uh, the delta in terms of epsilon. So, this is less than or equal to epsilon and then from here we will get our delta set if we take the delta equal to square root epsilon or anything less than uh, square root epsilon then our job is done. <coughs> so, if we choose if for any given epsilon if we choose this delta. So, the epsilon is given yeah. So, we should not be confused here that we are setting at the at less than epsilon that is just to get the relation between this delta square and epsilon first this difference we have written in terms of delta square and then we are setting this everything less than epsilon because that is the aim and here we got this for given epsilon what should be our delta delta square should be less than or equal to epsilon. So, in that case this if we for any given epsilon if we choose this delta square less than or equal to epsilon then we can show that this difference is less than epsilon and this x y from any neighborhood of that 0 comma 0 point. So, the next problem we uh, it is also similar to the earlier one, but of course, uh, when we take the difference again to, to, to write this difference in terms of the delta uh, those steps are slightly different in this case. So, again we pick a point x comma y not equal to 0 comma 0 and go with the difference. So, here this is less than equal to this uh, absolute value of x plus y and again the sign is bounded by 1. So, that is already used here. Now, the uh, x plus y the absolute value this we need to write in terms of the delta neighborhood. So, delta neighborhood is again this x square plus y square uh, less than delta. So, we have to write this x plus y absolute value in terms of the x square plus y square basically. So, here x plus y we know already this triangular inequality that this will be uh, less than or equal to mod x plus mod y. And then we know that uh, mod x minus mod y is square is greater than or equal to 0. And from here we get this that x square plus y square minus 2 x y is greater than or equal to 0. So, 2 x y if we take to the other side that will be less than equal to x square plus y square. And now, if we add both the sides, so the left hand side also we are adding x square plus y square and this side also we are adding x square plus y square. So, the right hand side will become 2 times x square plus y square and here the left hand side this will become the whole square of x uh, mod plus y naught whole square. So, now out of this uh, inequality we realize that this uh, mod x plus mod y is less than square root 2 square root x square plus y square. So, we have to use these inequalities to uh, write this mod x plus mod y we will replacing now by this square root 2 square root x square plus y square. And now, we already know that this is our delta. So, we have here now square root 2 delta and now this everything will be set to less than epsilon and we got that relation between epsilon and delta again. 
So, if we choose this delta less than epsilon by uh, root 2, in that case this difference between f x y and this uh, f 0 0 will be less than equal to epsilon. Indeed, here we can have equality also. So, the, the delta can be chosen epsilon by square root 2 or less than anything less than square epsilon by square root 2. In that case, this difference is less than epsilon whenever x y is from this delta neighborhood of 0 comma 0. So, this was a slightly different problem where this inequality is used in order to set this difference in terms of delta. So, this is the last problem. Here we discussed that limit x y goes to 0 0 x y over square root x square plus y square is equal to 0. So, again we start with uh, the difference between the function and the given uh, limit value 0 0. So, we have here x y over square root uh, x square plus y square. So, everything need to be converted into x square plus y square, so that we can replace it by the de delta neighborhood, because here also the limit we are approaching to 0 0. So, the square root uh, x square plus y square that term will define that neighborhood. So, here, but we have this uh, absolute value x y term, but again we can use that inequality which was used in the previous uh, example. And here we have already this x y uh, the absolute value. So, this x y absolute value is less than square uh, x square plus y square by 2 and that can be used here now. So, here this x y absolute value is replaced by x square plus y square, because we can forget this half here, because this is again further inequality we have uh, used in this case. So, this is x square plus y square and this is in fact is strict when x y is not equal to 0 0. So, we have here x square plus y square and divided by this x square plus y square. And now, this uh, is x square root x square plus y square, uh, because this was power half and this is power 1 there. And this can be set now uh, with this neighborhood. So, this is less than delta. So, this everything is less than delta and that we can be set to less than or equal to epsilon. So, again we got that relation that if we take delta equal to epsilon or less than epsilon, then uh, our aim which was for given epsilon and we choose this delta less than or equal to epsilon, then this difference is less than epsilon which is the epsilon delta definition of the limit. So, just to conclude here, we have gone through the functions of two variables. So, z is equal to f x y and we have seen that what it represents. So, it represents a surface in the in this three dimensional uh, plane. And then the definition uh, of this limit which was just discussed uh, with epsilon delta approach which is uh, of very much use for the theoretical purpose. And here we can uh, also use it to prove that uh, a given number is the limit of that function. Well, so uh, these are the references we have used for preparing uh, this lecture and with this I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.